Hello everybody, this is part 6 on how to make a shooter game in Scratch. In this video, I will make the upgrades actually work for the player, and start the machine gun upgrades in the shop. If you haven't seen parts 1 through 5 in this series, then make sure to check them out, link is in the description below. So right now, the upgrades work as you can see the description when you hover over it. You can also buy the upgrade, but the upgrade doesn't really do anything. So let's make it actually work. Let's uh, create a new variable. I'll just call it pistol firing speed and then click OK and let's set that to zero when initialized so when flag clicked then um, set pistol firing speed to 0 0.3 because the firing speed of the pistol is 0 0.3 right here and let's replace the 0 0.3 in here to pistol firing speed so right now, it still does the exact same thing, but it just replaced the wait 0.3 seconds with a variable. So when we buy the faster firing speed upgrade, we want the pistol firing speed to decrease, so the pistol fires faster. So let's go to our upgrades, and this right here is our faster firing speed upgrade. So after we click on the upgrade, then we want to change the firing speed by, let's say, 0.1 and negative 0.1 so yeah change pistol firing speed by negative 0.1 and then drag it in here so right now it fires at a rate of one shot every 0.3 seconds but after we buy the upgrade then it fires at a rate of one shot every 0.2 seconds so as you see here it's a bit faster so uh, this is before and this is after, um, like this. And we can actually buy it again, since we have $50 left. So now it shoots even faster, um, like this. So now let's start on the pistol damage. So let's create a new variable and name it pistol uh, damage. Click OK. And set that to whatever damage it does right now. I think it does... Um, Two. Let me check. Um, yeah, so we have damage right now, and that is the damage for both the gun and pistol. I meant the machine gun and pistol. So what we could just do is just set damage to pistol damage. So drag that into here. And now uh, go to your icon and go to your damage upgrade, which is uh, this one. So the second one. And then change damage by 1 after it's bought. Oh, actually, it's uh, pistol damage. So, yeah. And also make sure to uh, set pistol damage to 1. So, set pistol damage to uh, 1. Wait, actually, a 2 because it's a pistol. So, yeah. So, now if you test it, then right now, pistol damage is 2. And it takes... Um, wait... It takes three shots to kill one of those orange zombies. But if you press P and buy the upgrade, then pistol damage is three, and it only takes two shots to kill the orange zombie. So, yeah. So, let me show you one more time. Uh, without it, then it takes three shots. One, two, three. And after we buy it, then it should take two, because... The orange zombies have 6 health, and it does 3 damage, so... Okay, that does not work. That is weird. Um, um, oh yes, it is because after you buy the upgrade, then you also need to set damage to pistol damage. So, um, set the damage to pistol damage, and now we should be good. So, pistol damage is 2. And let's find an orange zombie here. It takes three shots. And after we buy the upgrade, then it should take two after we find one again. Um, yeah, it takes two. And it also takes one hit to kill a normal zombie because the normal zombie's health is also three. So, yeah. Now we want the uh, pistol knockback upgrade to work. So let's first create a variable, name it uh, pistol knockback, knockback, click OK. 
and let's set that to zero when the green flag is clicked. And now go to your bullet class. I mean, uh, sprite. Actually, uh, go to your zombie sprite. So, so we want the zombie to move back and amount of steps based on the bullet's knockback. So let's go to motion, and then grab a uh, move ten steps. Drag it at the end here after the if zombie lives is less than one, and then go to data. Grab a pistol knockback, and then grab an operator. Um, grab a multiplication, and then let's type negative one here and then put pistol knockback in here and drag that into the move 10 steps so after the zombie touches the bullet then it takes damage and then it moves pistol knockback times negative 1 steps so let's um, set pistol knockback to 1 and test it out so when it touches the bullet then it goes back one step but you can barely see it so I'll make it a bit larger let's say move back um, negative five steps so set pistol knockback to five and let's see it again so it moves back five steps like that yeah so now you can see it and we have our knockback but I want to set it back to let's say 1.5 so let's see how that works um yeah I think that's pretty good so we have our knockback upgrade right here Let's um, set pistol knockback back to zero, and when we click on the upgrade, then it sets it to 1.5. So change uh, pistol knockback by 1.5, and drag it in here. So when we start the game, then there is no knockback at all, but once we go to the shop and then buy the upgrade, the pistol knockback is now 1.5 and you can see the zombies are slightly knocked back by the pistols so yeah looks pretty good let's also for now make the player only able to buy each upgrade once this is going to be only temporary so um let's create a variable and name it um bot and then select for this sprite only and then click OK and let's set bot to zero when the green flag is clicked and then after not mouse down let's just set bot to one and do the same with the other clones so go here set bot to one go here set bot to one now let's also add an if statement and Let's check if uh, bot equals zero. And then put it inside the if mouse down. So this ensures that you can only buy each upgrade once. And again, this is only temporary. I will change this in the future episodes. But let's uh, copy the if statement. And then apply this to the other clones again. So if bot equals zero, put it inside the if mouse down. And do the same for this one. So now, you can only buy each upgrade only once. So I click on this, and then click again, and I can't. So yeah. Now let's make the machine gun upgrades for the shop. I was thinking of adding an arrow on the side here. So when you click on it, then it goes to the machine gun upgrades. Oops. Um, so yeah, let's start drawing our arrow. Let's create a new sprite. And then um, draw a triangle. I will do like this. Um, and then change the points a bit. Um, yep, so like this. Yeah. I think this is pretty good. And now I will outline this in black. So, like this. I'll make it a bit smaller too. So, um, okay, maybe a bit larger actually. Okay. I'll actually re outline this. So, um, 
Okay, I want the outline to be a bit thicker, so I'll just copy this triangle here, and then paint this black. Then enlarge this, and put this in the back. So, yeah. All right, our arrow looks pretty good. And let's grab a when flag clicked, then hide. And when I receive show, then let's, um, let's see, wait like one second and then show. And when I receive hide, then wait, actually wait zero seconds. So just hide immediately. And also, let's make this a bit larger, so set size to maybe 120. Actually, I'll just increase it like this, so, um, first set this back to 100. And I'll make this a bit larger. Um, yeah. This great triangle isn't in the center, so, um, okay. I think it's a bit bigger. Alright. Now let's move this to, let's say, right here. And then drag this in here. Now let's test it out. And the triangle shows. I'll make this wait 0 0.8 seconds. Just a bit shorter. And I'll move this a bit, like right here, I think. Yeah, okay. Now we want to check if the mouse is down. Then it does an action. So let's grab an forever loop. And then grab an if statement. If a uh, mouse down. Then let's change a different shop screen in like here. So let's create a new variable. Name it um, shop, um, shop screen, I guess. Click OK. And wait one second. Um, now let's set that to zero when the flag is clicked. Also, when you hide. Actually, when you show. So, yeah. Put it before the wait. And now when the mouse is down, you want the upgrades of the weapon to be machine gun. So, let's change shop, um, shop screen by one. And then wait until not mouse down. And now let's change this costume here based on the shop screen. So let's create a new costume for it. And I just copied this, so let's name this one Machine Gun. So I'm gonna type Machine Gun in here and center this. Right around here, I think. Yeah, it's pretty good. I will actually uh, name the costumes to one and two. So one is Pistol and two is Machine Gun. And then switch costume to um, shop screen when I show. So right here. And then add a forever loop and switch costume to shop screen. So when the arrow is pressed, then shop screen would change from 1 to 2. Okay, yeah. Um, change the shop screens to 1. So yeah. When the shop screen is 1, then it would change to the costume of pistol. And then when you click the right arrow, which is uh, this right here, then it would change shop screen by one, which would also change the costume of this to machine gun. So as you see here, um, it is pistol. And once you press the arrow here, it changes to machine gun. Let's also make this able to change back infinitely, which this already does, but it's still better to change it from one and two. And oh yeah, one thing I forgot, is also add a if touching mouse pointer because otherwise that would just um, detect any mouse down um, event so yeah put this into here and now this is better and let's add an if else statement so if um, shop screen is equal to 2 then set shop screen to 1 else change shop screen to 1 and like this. And I know uh, this changes nothing gameplay wise,
but um, it's better for a variable to have fixed numbers like 1 and 2 instead of going infinitely like this. Uh, this is what we had before, so yeah, it's better than going infinitely than... Actually, sorry, uh, it's better not going infinitely than going infinitely. So yeah, I'll drag that back and yeah. But I think this is a pretty good place to stop. So if you guys enjoyed the video, then make sure to like it and subscribe too if you haven't already. Also, um, if you have any questions about your projects, then I can answer them in the comments below. But anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, see ya.